Welcome back to Leveraging Leadership, where we unpack the art of business leadership. I'm your host, Emily Sander, Chief of Staff turned Executive Leadership Coach. I work with people to help them step into effective leadership and realize their professional and personal goals. If you have known failure and success, if you have had good bosses and bad bosses, if you are a high achiever and want new ideas, and if you want the practical and tactical side of things, then you are in the right place. This show is all about finding your points of greatest influence and leveraging them to better serve those around you. Welcome back to Leveraging Leadership. In this episode, I want to talk about how you need to be creating some problems. Go create some problems. Be a troublemaker. Here's what I mean by that. Sometimes there are good problems to have. I'll give you three examples. The first one is, oh my gosh, we have so many sales, we can't deliver them. We can't deliver our operations and delivery teams are overloaded. That is a good problem to have. Out of all the problems you could have in business, that is a great one to have. Oh my gosh, look at all this revenue coming through the door. Now, does it need to be addressed and solved for, especially for the operations and delivery teams? Yes. But overall, as a business, that is a great problem to have. As chief of staff, one of the common refrains I would say to sales leaders is, go create that problem. You don't worry about delivery. Don't worry about that. You go create that problem. And if and when that happens, we will find a way to deliver. I promise you. If that's overtime with the teams, if that's rapid scaling and growing of the teams, if that's Emily on nights and evenings and weekends, like doing the stuff to deliver the things, we will make that happen. Don't worry about that. You go create that problem because that is a good problem to have. Second example would be, Emily, Emily, what do I do? I'm trying to fill this position and we have three amazing candidates. I can't possibly pick just one. Holy cow, as chief of staff, that is a fantastic problem to have, to have top talent wanting to be on your team. And oh my goodness, I can't even decide which one of these because they're all good, great, best, better options. Not like, mm, I kind of have to make a call here. This is a warm body. Let's bring them on board. Or, all right, I have like these, technically they meet all the requirements on paper, but I don't feel good about them. All right, I'm going to have to choose like the lesser of two evils here. Which one do I choose? If you've got three amazing candidates on the table, well, that's a great problem to have. Does it need to be addressed and solved for in terms of maybe we don't have capacity for three, or maybe we do, maybe we can split this role in two, or maybe we can create a whole entirely other role we hadn't thought of before, but since we have this type of person with this background and experience and talent, actually, it would make sense to hire two of these people and put one over here. Or it could be like, look, being transparent with the candidate. You are top talent. I would love, love, love to bring you on. I don't have a role for you right now, but I'm going to try to work with the team and maybe create one. Can we just stay in touch over the next several weeks? Because I really, I want to keep this conversation going. Having three wildly qualified candidates you are excited to bring on your team is a good problem to have. Third example would be Holy cow, we got so many survey responses from our staff. We have 11 things that we could implement. We asked for ideas about marketing slogans and about how to improve internal processes and about how to get some learning and, and different information about the t what the teams do internally across the organization. We got 11 actionable, really bright ideas. These were things we hadn't thought of. They're creative solutions. They're something we could implement today. Now, maybe you have to work out, all right, what order do we do these in? We can't do them all at once, which makes sense to put first. But my goodness, if you have one, an engaged staff that is giving you that type of response and engagement and feedback, that's fantastic. And then if you have these this laundry list of actionable things you can go implement, that is a good problem to have. So as chief of staff, your job is to create these types of problems. So what can you do to go, oh my gosh, like we have so much revenue. That's, that's terrible. Like, oh my gosh, we have so many freaking sales contracts in the door. Our sales teams are going beast mode and closing these things. Like, how do we support this? Great problem to have. Go create that problem. If you're sitting there going, yeah, we have so many amazing candidates coming on board. 
this puts us in good position. That's a great problem to have. Quick story here. I am a Seattle Seahawks fan at our GM, John Schneider. His methodology and approach to recruiting is saying, all right, I want depth at each position so that when we go into a draft round, we can pick the top talent and it's not position dependent. So in other words, instead of saying, oh my gosh, we have a deficit at, I don't know, tight end or corner. We have to like scramble and crawl and do horse trading and behind the scenes things to get who we think is going to be in the best at those positions. Instead, we can say we have built our roster in such a way that when we have a draft round, we can say, all right, in this particular draft round, if we look at these particular college players, which ones are the top talent overall? I just want talent on our team. So in the same way, if you can be in a position where you're attracting so much top talent to be on your teams, that's something that you should have a think about and be intentional about creating as chief of staff. And it's not only the new folks coming in, but the existing team members you have, how do you get them empowered and engaged so they are helping create these ideas and innovation within your organization? So. As chief of staff, your takeaway is go be a troublemaker. Go create some problems and make sure that the good problems that your company needs. If you would like some ideas about how to create these problems, then I would love to support you in a free 30-minute clarity call. And these are just calls where you and I can have a chat. You can tell me what's going on in your world and what problems you need to create. And if you can identify those things, great. If you need help identifying, Emily, where should I create problems first? We can talk about that. If you have an idea about that already, but not sure how to implement that, we can come up with some strategies and some, some insightful key takeaways that you can have off of that call. So my job is to add as much value as I can to you in those 30 minutes, and it's a free clarity call as an option to you. The link will be in the show notes. Otherwise, go forth, be good chiefs of staff, be good leaders, and I will talk to you next week on Leveraging Leadership. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like, share and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. 